Hi there, I'm Rosemary Miguez and I am part of the Interlake Wave Artist Studio Tour. I'm number eight on the tour. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I make something very creative called word trees. But before I get into that, I'm just gonna to explain to you my love for trees. As you can see by some of the paintings in the background, I paint them, I sketch them, I put them on various different items and I really love trees. Why do I love trees? Because trees offer us so much. They offer us shelter from the sun or the rain. We can create shelters from trees with the wood. We can keep our shelters warm with harvesting the old trees. Trees actually help cleanse the air and trees can be used in various different ways. The other thing I love about trees is that they've got these branches that are like arms and it's like they can give you a little hug when you're standing underneath them. Trees also look after each other in the forest. They have a root system that can talk to each other and look after each other. So there's many reasons why I spend so much time painting my trees. So now I'm going to show you a few other things that I do with the trees. So let me show you a few other things that I do. Like I mentioned, I really love to sketch trees. So here's the beginning of some trees that I'm sketching, just starting on the outside. I also love to use the trees naturally. This is called the tear tree, and if you see the sap, you can see the sap in there. So trees themselves also have a lot of beauty involved with them. While I'm waiting for my paintings to dry, often I will take the extra gesso and sand and I'll make trees on bottles. So this is a winter tree. Here is a summer tree. Differently shaped bottles are fun to work with. And every now and then, it's so wonderful to find an old, glass and paint my trees on there. Now like I said to you, the word tree is something that we're going to work on today. And this is a word tree. There. And you can see the words. Where is it from? It's from a book. And what do we need to make a word tree? I'll show you. To make a word tree, recycling is the best way to go. Like the tree that I showed you, recycling a tree that's been cut down. Wow, you can use more recycling. A book, which is made from a tree. So the book is something that you're gonna wanna get. The other thing is, at a second hand store, you get an old frame. And if it has a backing that still has the support attached, then that will turn into your canvas for the word tree. Now let's have a look and see what we're aiming for. What's going to be the overall end? The overall end is going to look like this. So you're going to want to be drawing out the trunk. Just sketching it out rough in the beginning is the way to do it. And then we're going to be looking into our recycled book and we're going to cut, we're actually going to cut out pieces. And what these are is this is the overall look of the tree. So you might want to have a look at what trees are. This includes many small branches and all the leaves and the clusters. So you're looking at what does each of the cluster look like? And to make it an accent, we will be drawing some of the main branches in and that accents it. So how do we draw the main branches in? Or what are the steps that we want to take to do this? Well, let me show you a couple of ways. First, after observing a tree, you might want to just sketch it out quite quickly. Again, don't worry about these dots that come from somewhere or a tag. They're going to get covered up. So you're going to sketch roughly where you think some of your main branches are going to go. Okay, so do that first and have an idea of what your tree looks like. And then to create the clusters, 
we're going to go back to this paper and what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for negative space. So you go into your book and when you have a look at your book, you can see between the words, there are these, they appears to be lines. That's called negative space. There's nothing in there, but these are what we're aiming for. We want to find as many of these negative space lines as we can. And what we're going to do, oh, here's a nice straight one over here. And here's one that's a little bit on the crooked side. And sometimes there's a great big huge, see this negative space all, if you look at the outside of it, oh my goodness, that might make a very interesting looking branch. So be creative with that. And that's what you're looking for. When you find them, then you use a pencil or a pen. I use a pencil at first. And then you um, put your lines in and make sure that you know where your lines are going. So now you draw in the negative space lines for your main branches. When you finish doing that, then what you do is you just do the shapes. So this would be the, the general shape that's going around the bundles or the, around the branches, okay? So it's a big general shape that you are actually looking for. That's one way of doing it. Another way is if you take a look at this oak tree that I did, it has these very interesting sort of inverted U shapes because oak trees have that big roundish looking shape. So what you can do is you can take tracing paper Trace out the shape you've already drawn on your page and then cut out that trace. Just cut it out. And then when it's been cut out, what you can do is you can take one of your shapes, for example, and you can just find where there might be, oh, there's a negative space, so you might lay it there on the negative space. Trace it out like it's been done right here. Trace it out and then you're going to cut them out later. That's a couple of ways of getting to do your branches and your clusters of the trees. Next, let's put these little clusters after you've cut them out onto your sketched tree. So now what I'm hoping to do is show you how to put these pieces on. So I'm going to take one of those very interesting U shapes and I'm going to put it right, right there because we're working on the oak tree. I think I'm going to put another one of them over here. This is me sort of setting it all up and I'm going to put the top one over here. So I started to sort of create my shapes. I have a few extra shapes up here, so I'm going to grab this one. And I think I'm going to just slip it right there. It can go underneath, as you can see. And then I might uh, maybe slip this one underneath over here. And so basically what you're doing is you're placing these different bunches of trees that you have created here and there. That's what you're doing. You're just selecting places that you might want to put them. See? How that fits in there really nicely. Might put another one right here. Just and now you're beginning to see the shape. It's taking shape of what this oak tree kind of looks like. Because they have that that movement. And then of course we can fill it in like this. And maybe oh it looks like there needs to be another small one over here. And maybe even one more tucking way into there to give it that shape. So now you have your oak tree, basically your shape. I use uh, little pieces of green tape, sometimes to tape it down, and that's very, very helpful. Now when you're finished doing all of this, this is the time when you're going to go back in to your tree. And if you'd like to, when you're just learning it, you might want to go back in and just highlight where am I going to put those dark lines? Where are they going to go? So you finish it up. See, I, I might want to do this. And I think I might want to just 
make an extra branch right here and and then thicken this one up a little bit more work on this one more work on this one maybe come down here and I might want to put in a little bit of a give myself a little bit of a, a background here so where is this sitting on you know what's 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 back here that might be that might be interesting and then you just you just work on your on your tree like this just work on the bark and when you've got the bark to where you like it then that is when you're going to be finished and then you're going to shellac on top of all of that now we have our shapes cut out and here's some of the shapes here i have just set them all around my oak tree i find a pencil comes in handy because you can use the eraser as something that uh, you can um, uh, push things around i also in the back i'll show you here i have a little piece of um, green arts tape or painting tape and sometimes they come in handy for just putting things down so for example i'm going to put this one here and i can either use my finger or i can use that mm, i'm looking at that going i think i'd like it to be a little bit more on the side sort of falling down i like to put my main pieces up first i think i'll try this one right here and these ones have tape on them because i kind of know where I want to go and so I'm kind of doing a nice little loop back and forth here so I've taped them down where the branches um, are pointing towards and I'm taking my clusters of those branches and putting them together so now what I'll do is I will begin to add I'd like to slip this one underneath I'm noticing that there's a space up here, so maybe I'll just slip this one right there, and I'm gonna slip it underneath like that. That's pretty nice, I think. Uh, okay, I want something to kind of droop down over here, so I will come and I'll take this one here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put it up there. Because I like this open space right here. I think that's pretty pretty amazing and here's one oh I like how this went that's really nice it's just that falling down um so do I want to put much more in here let's have a look do we want to put this one in does it fit underneath not too sure mm, no no I don't think I want that one in there let me try something smaller oh yeah that 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 feels a little bit better so something smaller to sort of fill in. And it looks like there's a little gap here. So I think I'm going to fill that little gap in. So now what you have is, you see, I have my sort of overall look. I do prefer to have a little bit of spaces here and there. But this is kind of, let's just say this will be my oak tree for now. And so after I've done this part, then what I'm going to do is I have a look at it. I like the overall look. Um, one of two things, you can begin to sketch in the trunk of your tree now and give it a little bit of landscaping on the back, you know, where is my tree sitting, you know, give it a little bit of landscaping work on the back, or you can glue these pieces down ahead of time. So um, if you're going to glue them down, then you begin, you know, with the, with the, the background tree first and then the foreground on top of that. The background, the background, the background, and the foreground, right? And um, But please take your time moving things around. When you finish that, you might want to just add a little bit more sketching in. I think I'll just, you know, I might put something in there like that, which has made me think that maybe I want to have something smaller in there, just, just to add it in. Look at that. I just, you know, maybe I would like to put that in there. I'm not too sure, but it looks pretty okay right now. After I finish doing all that, and I've got it all sketched, I've got it glued down, I've got it sketched down, believe it or not, I go over it with this. It's called a puzzle saver. And it's when people make puzzles and then they wanna save it, so they put, the, they, they put this clear coat over top of it. And uh, so it's a laminate. And so I laminate, and I'll just show you quickly. Oh! I left a step out. After you've done all this work, take a pen and outline your clusters. 
It always makes them sort of pop out. It looks really good when you laminate your clusters. And make sure that you've got, I mean outline your clusters, make sure that you've got uh, nice beautiful dark lines to show the bark of your tree. When you've done all that, then you want to put this absolutely wonderful puzzle saver on. So one more thing about these word trees. You can make them very personal. The one that I showed you right here is from a book called Foucault's Pendulum. In fact, this is from the cover of the book that I used as a red moon rising, sun, whatever I'd like it to be. So you can choose a book. How wonderful to make a gift for someone. Here's something that I'm in the middle of working right now. This is from the UN Declaration of Human Rights. So lots of the words in this word tree is from the Declaration of Human Rights. So in a way, you can make things really personal for someone. If you know what a favorite book or a favorite saying, even a poem, you can create a word tree. And now you've created something very personal for someone. And you know, trees are wonderful. They're like us people, right? They stand up, they put our arms around. So when you think about it, giving someone a word tree is repurposing that beautiful tree. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little bit of time we've spent together. And I really hope to see you on the wave. Bye for now.